Okay, so since I was out here working on it, I thought I'd make a quick video on the fans on the Discovery. Um, this Discovery has a single electric fan with two, a two-stage thermostat, the temperatures for the thermostat shown here, and it used to have a selector switch, so you'd either have the fan off or select either of the temperature ranges, um, the two, three wires coming into here, two from the thermostat, and then one going across to this relay on the right. So it triggers the relay, the, re the relay turns on the fan, and there's a 30 amp fuse here, which is currently replaced with a resettable one. Now the problem was, this fuse kept blowing. So, I didn't have a fan, and I didn't know it. The problem is, okay, I can see the temperature on here, but these are incredibly vague. I didn't know if the fan needed to be on. So, yeah, it kind of left me in a situation where I didn't have a fan, and I didn't know it. So, um... I wanted to add a some kind of indicator that the fan needs to be on, that the fan should be on. Turns out that this uh, 30 amp fuse was feeding the fan from from the relay. Whoops, you can't see the fan from the relay, and it was feeding the the circuitry for the thermostat and the switch. So if the fuse blew, the whole lot went. Originally, I just thought about um, adding a switch. I got one of these switches, which is, lights up, and you can feed into the idea of a wiring diagram, but it's not really worth looking at in too much detail. So it's upside down. You can feed into the positive side on one side and then through the lamp, basically, to trigger, and it, it'll light up. It's quite expensive, I had to buy this from Spain. Problem is, it's really dim. It's the worst illuminated switch I've ever seen. And I know there are, will be losses going through this with the relay signal, but even when you connect it up properly, it's it's really dim. You can barely see the light. Um, otherwise, it would have been great, but not many switches like this are actually produced, apparently. So, oh well. Editing Matt talking here. I also forgot to mention that because the whole thing is fed by the 30 amp circuit, even if I did have an illuminated switch, if I didn't find a way around that, it just wouldn't work if the fuse had blown, so I wouldn't be in a better situation at all. Um, I've come up with another option. So, as I mentioned, this has two stages. Now, the thermostat on a 200 TDI, to my knowledge, is an 88 degree thermostat. So, looking at these two temperature ranges, so it'll turn on at 88 and off at 83, on at 92, off at 87. This range here would be running when the thermostat isn't open in an ideal world with the thermostat that I think's in here. So really, we only want this range, 92 to 87. According to these that I've been able to find, they both match. If the three um, pins on the thermostat Obviously, you've got your common, which is the positive, and then your two outputs. Um, they both point to the high temp being the same side. So that's the only side I'm intending to use at the minute. Um, so anyway, I'll show you the front in a second. But at the moment, I've now got this single switch in. This is an illuminated switch, and it's wired up so that it turns on when there is a demand from the thermostat. So to demonstrate, I've actually bypassed the thermostat with, I've got Makita battery, a USB's 12 volt adapter, and then a relay, and I'll show you that again when I get to the front. When you turn this on, this connects the two, so you're connecting positive from the battery now to the thermostat, and then when the thermostat's on, this lights up. When this lights up, it means that the, the fan should be on. Now, if I then check this fuse and see it's blown, I'll know that something's wrong. This has its own independent fuse. If I then switch this up for on, the fan turns on. I don't know if you can hear it, but the fan did turn on. So when the fan needs to be on, that will be red, hopefully, no matter what. And then you turn it off, it cuts off again. The reason I've done this uh, as flick up, two reasons. Um, one is because the switch doesn't physically fit the other way because the, the, this switch has two terminals. It has the, the input output, and then it has a, a third 
um, ground terminal, uh, earth terminal, for the lamp, which I've got going into here. I'll talk about that in a second. So, um, it, yeah, you physically can't fit it otherwise. But also, I've had instances in the past, and I'm actually going to do that with all of these, where the, the, the top mirror, the rear view mirror, fell off, and it flicked this switch on and flattened the battery. So I'm actually going to flip all these switches upside down so that they have to be up for on. Americans would know that as a standard light switch. In this country, a light switch is flicked down for on. So it's backwards, but it means that if something falls on one of these, you're not going to turn it on and flatten the battery, which is good. So, yeah, so for this switch, we now have a feed from the thermostat. We have a feed out to the relay, and then the last one is this ground, which I've tied in with the ground from the relay, which works fine. There is actually a spare ground behind here, but it's quite thick green cable. This stuff's really quite thick, and it couldn't physically get into the right space, so I've just made a new ground, and this works absolutely fine. Although, I need to label it. My label printer ran out of, well, labels, so uh, I'll do that at some point but i think this is going to be a good solution and if i find that i'm having trouble with the temperature then i can switch it to the lower range really easily and i'll show you that in a second or i can come up with another idea but really i just don't need two ranges on this so now we're out at the front and this is my little thermostat um three pins and as, uh, as I showed you in the diagram, you've got a low and a high side with the two temperatures. I don't know the exact temperature range other than the stickers, which I'm guessing they were right because that's what the last guy had in there. So I just copied those when I did the new dashboard. Um, so yeah, I've bypassed it with the, with the relay and the relay just goes to the 12 volt adapter and the Makita power supply. So that mimics it. But previously there was this, um, switch box and this must have its own fuse in it i think this just provides common positive and common ground for the switching and for the fan um, so i'm bypassing that for this purpose i've got a new bit of wire one amp fuse because it's just the thermostat and the relay that's in circuit so that uh, wiggles all the way around it will be cable tied that's going to be the new positive for the thermostat into that terminal and then the green is the one i'm using runs off and goes into the back of the switch i'll black i'll just blank off with electrical tape um because i don't need it also these these are quite rough so i'm quite pleased to not be using them um, and they won't be connected to anything at all which is good um so yeah that will then feed 12 volts directly to the thermostat at all times and it's fine it can then go off and do its thing hopefully this will solve the issue i really hope this doesn't blow i mean one amp should be fine there's really nothing in this it won't be shorted so it should be absolutely all right fingers crossed because the last thing i want is for this fan to not be on and for the engine to cook itself um I've had an issue where I think water gets into it and muck gets into it and it jams up. I think that's why the fuse blew initially. But uh, I've cleaned it out, tried it, and it's been fine, but the fuse has still been blowing. So, not sure. But I'll keep an eye on both of these now. They'll have the resettable fuse. I'll probably swap them back to a normal fuse and we'll see what happens. The fan works fine. But um, we just need to see. In fact, oh, let's just demonstrate the fan. Back in. So the fan is on. If I flick the switch. Yeah, I'm going to admit that's not the best sounding fan ever, but um, oh well. Oh, it's broken. Didn't know that was... Uh, didn't know that was broken. Oh well, little cap. Yeah, not the best thing in the world, but uh, it'll do. So, uh, yeah. And uh, the other thing going on is that uh, this is all sanded and stripped because it's getting painted. 
Mm, that's a story for another day. This has already been painted. New security screws in, which I've had for like years. Really need to wash this. Uh, the old 8274. Front bumper has been painted. So yeah, uh, that's it for this update on the bobtail. Fingers crossed, no fan issues.